This week on the Ocean Cruises podcast, we are speaking with Lauren and Kirk from the YouTube sailing channel, Sailing Sulianis. Lauren and Kirk started their liveaboard life five years ago when they began to hunt for their first cruising boat. They picked the Tartan 37, one of the most respected American-made blue water cruisers. Their journey started in Racine, Milwaukee before navigating the Great Lakes and the inland waterway systems to Papa in the Gulf of Mexico. They have spent seasons cruising the Bahamas and meticulously caring for their boat, Sulianus, and are now about to go boat hunting to start their next adventure. If you want to follow their journey, check out their YouTube channel, Sailing Sulianus. You can support the podcast on Patreon and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, watch the interviews on YouTube and download the audio on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We'll start off um, asking you, because I'm a parent, um, how is the uh, transition to be full mature adults gone <laughs> with parenthood? <laughs> uh, good. Yeah, I, I think like I was I was actually looking at our daughter yesterday, um, like thinking, you know, have, have we been missing something by not having a child for like the last five or six or seven years, you know? Like, mm. And then at the same time, it's like, well, that you would have had a completely different child, you know? So you, you, you like, I want that time with my daughter, you know, like I almost sort of am like missing the time that I didn't have if I had had her sooner. Had her younger, um, yeah. But she wouldn't have been the same person. And it, you know, like you can't change that. Like, I love yeah. my daughter and I, I wouldn't have wanted her to be a different person and it would have been a totally different experience. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 there's a lot of weird things wrapped up in, in that thought process. Right? Yeah. It's like yeah. simultaneously you wish you could have had her. Like when I go and pick her up, I'm like, Oh my gosh. You know, like how long am I, I going to be able to pick you up? Like I, I feel old, I feel really <laughs> old. So I wish, yeah. you know, I could have, we could have had her like eight years ago, but then there's so much, we wouldn't have gone cruising. We wouldn't have, done, we wouldn't have done this. There wouldn't have been a sailing Solianus, most likely. So, um, yeah, things would have been way different. Yeah. It just gives you a completely different perspective on life and, like, a different perspective on every type of decision that you make and why you make that type of decision. Um, but, uh, you, you know, the important thing is it's like if you did have the kid three or four years earlier, it's like, oh, you could have cuddled something super cute, like for three or four years young, longer. Um, <laughs> but you wouldn't be the same person, which then made you right. the same parents, which is probably better yeah. parents because the more grown up you are, the better parent you're likely to be. We, we hope so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's better than like reversing, <laughs> I suppose. Yeah. So how, <laughs> how was it with, because I think on YouTube you put like, this is, the, the first cruising season um with the baby like how did that go in general did did you just find ways to deal with having a baby on board and did it work out really well it it worked out yeah i mean i think it worked out <laughs> yeah it, it worked out i mean we didn't we dialed everything way back well I, I think i think it actually it made it made us actual cruisers like it made us we decided we weren't going to be, you know, bashing up wind. We were going to go where the wind takes us and we were going to yeah. go when the weather was good. We were going to not push things the way that we kind of did before. Like we were sort of timeline driven. We and, had no plan this and, time. And a lot of that was because of, you know, work obligations and other things like outside of the cruising life. And yeah, this, that, you know, the year that we spent on the boat with Renata or the season was... Yeah purely just cruising it was purely about being with our daughter on our boat wherever we were and, and I think that like fundamentally changed my mindset for the better uh, which is really cool so um, you know like the long history of how we ended up doing what we're doing is that um, you know basically I gave Lauren a book about uh, somebody who who sailed around the Caribbean and she fell in love with the idea of traveling on a boat and decided she really wanted to do this before we had kids. So it was just the two of us. And the irony of it all, I think, is that until we actually had a child, we were sort of like pushing our way through it, you know, and instead of in, in taking it for what it was and, and enjoying cruising life the way that it was supposed to be. We worked on our boat too much. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you kept not thinking about it. Yeah. yeah, we worked on it like it was our forever boat, which was probably silly, but we, we learned, learned a, a ton. Learned yeah. A ton. yeah. 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 I mean, we like, were trying to do 
we were just trying to do that with a bunch of other stuff like starting a youtube channel still working freelance and you know actually learning about boats like we knew nothing about sailboats and navigation and you know the whole laundry list so yeah. it was just it was a lot i think it, it changes your perspective on things as well like just with regards to being on a boat like the way I sail or the way I play around on my boat when I'm on my own or with a friend, it's like totally different from the way I handle that thing when I've got like my wife and my kid on board. It's literally just yeah. about, I mean, my wife gets seasick as well. And, um, you know, the kid just starts flying around everywhere. So it's like yeah. sailing just becomes how comfortable can I make this journey? And that is literally <laughs> the only thing I'm thinking about right now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, Kirk talks about that in the episode that we just posted about how important it is to make it comfortable because it is inherently uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. And you need to be at a hundred percent all the time because it's, it can be dangerous if you're not. So um, got to make it comfortable so that you can keep your wits about you and, you know, stay safe. Yeah. How, how much has the year been with being parents on a boat um, influenced some of the decisions you want to make to, get the next boat with like is that played a large factor in it or was it something that you think you may have done anyway uh so, i mean like the the boats that we're looking at or like what what our next plans would be well yeah just to change boats in general um yeah like to upgrade the, go bigger go wider you know did like you being a parent on this boat was that what kicked you to say okay we need to like change the vessel up a little bit now even before, like, even before the idea of having a kid, we, we wanted to go multi-hull. Okay. Um, but that was, like, the first leap. But now the, the boat that we're considering has probably, it might have changed a little bit. It changes bit. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's a few things to think about, like, you know, cockpit design. Like, the, the traditional mm -hmm. move, I feel like, for families on a, on a monohull is, you know, move to, like, a center cockpit, right, or have something where there's sort of like this, this safety bucket in the center of the boat, if you will, you know, yep. and it's, uh, you know, it gives you better visibility. It probably has a nicer layout below to like let the parents get away from the kids a little bit mm -hmm. more, you know, there's <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. there's some other advantages. So there's, there's things like that that I think we've considered, but like uh, our primary motivation for kind of what our next boat is going to be is it's not so much about the boat, but kind of the style of sailing that, that we're going to do um, okay. for a few years. And, and that was influenced by having a child and was sort of planned. Um, so, you know, to, to kind of speak high level about, you know, what our long-term plans have always been, it was do this sort of, I mean, like you talked about, like a test sail, a prolonged test sail, if you will, on a boat, just the two of us before we, we had kids. Um, and then, probably change the style of sailing that we're going to do for a little while while we have kids. So family has always been very, very important to us. And, and we wanted to be a little bit more local um, when our kids are young to have time with, you know, to spend with their grandparents. So I think we're looking at probably doing, you know, more um, local sailing mixed with sort of shorter term, what I've been calling just like voyages, which mm -hmm. Like in my mind, that means, you know, like a couple of weeks at a time or like kind of taking specific trips um, rather than like prolonged, you know, live aboard type or cruising type sailing for, for a couple of years. Um, while we also work on some financial, you know, things that we want to get in place before we take off on a, hopefully what would be at that point, a third boat um for you know a much longer sail with kids uh much further destinations kids are expensive you need bigger boats you they need are. to work more <laughs> hours you know yeah. <laughs> everything racks both. up yeah exactly and uh yeah it's just like well it's a major thing to factor as well i mean two people cruising you can live on a relatively small budget you don't need that much money for food or excursions or anything but like when you got a kid and you need to get new clothes every six months and need to start thinking about like homeschooling and yeah oh you know do they like playstation uh that's more that's you know another cost <laughs> now <laughs> you know, one thing after another in a way yeah what so just with regards to like the plan i'll go back to like the beginning a little bit but just like the plan moving forwards you thinking of like continuing to do like youtube videos and stuff like that about the um 
journeys or the voyages you'll make. That's yeah. the plan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And actually, you know, one, one of the things that um, I think was kind of difficult for us was balancing our, our working obligations with our sailing obligations, with our filmmaking obligations for YouTube. And I think uh, it, it was a lot to tackle. And we've, we've obviously, you know, like our videos have always been behind. It's a thing that like people have always complained about. I think it's somewhat warranted, you know, like everyone wants to feel like they're a part of the journey that's happened happening now. But I think, um, you know, there's, that's the way that video production works is it, it takes a long time. The watch is going to have some sort of delay um, in it. But when we think about kind of what we want to do next, we want to be able to enjoy, you know, sailing while we're sailing. We want to be in the moment. We want to do that. Um, and then come back and make the video. Yeah, um, maybe. Right? Like, yeah. Like, we we want to, we want to take a, take a little trip, focus on, you know, being there, enjoying it, film it, come back and edit it and, and, and put it together. So like, I think our, our style of video is going to change a little bit. We've kind of played around with, uh, you know, or toyed around in our, in our heads with, you know, how we might change our production style. And yeah, we've been uh, trying to talk ourselves into lowering our quality. <laughs> not necessarily that's kind of what you guys are known for so uh, maybe like, that's not the right idea <laughs> <laughs> so what, what we've talked about is is still producing one or two like highly produced videos a, a month um two but then all right right now we're not we're not doing two. yeah but, it's it's but hard then filtering in you know some more kind of real time and like um you know less uh yeah, less stylized, less, less stylized yeah, content. Totally produced stuff. I think one of the one of the issues, I mean, now we're like totally getting down a, a, a rabbit hole. A rabbit hole here. <laughs> but one one of the, the issues that I've always kind of had with our interaction on YouTube is is it's felt like a very one sided conversation. Yeah. Where I've... we put out content and then you know people comment on it, but because we are so far behind, we don't get to have like this cool dialogue, this back and yeah. forth about, you know, like having people who have so graciously given us so many ideas. We rarely get to use people's suggestions, which sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Like that would, that would be super helpful part of doing it as well. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we miss, we would love to have that. And so we want to be, we want to be more current. Like we, a lot of people are like, Oh, we see that you have a delay in your video. Do you do that? So no one can know where you are. Like, (laughs) no, (laughs) Like a week would suffice, you know. <laughs> yeah, <it'd be> fine. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, no, it's we 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 wish we could be more current, and we we will actually quite mm. soon because we're running out of footage. <laughs> right, okay, so yeah, it's, ne- yeah. it's necessary. Actually. Yeah. It is. Yeah. We will be jumping. We will be leaping very soon. We we yeah. took a bit of a hiatus, you know, when mm-hmm. our daughter was was a newborn, and and then and after our first season with her, so like the last half a year or more we we haven't filmed very much because we haven't been on the boat very much so um yeah we'll we'll be jumping soon yeah um, we've told our patrons that so many times and like we really (laughs) believed it we're like yeah we're really gonna get caught up and then i i hit a batch of footage that was really dense you know like when we got to the bahamas we were only there we're only in the bahamas for two months but i don't know i don't even remember how long it took me to get our bahamas videos out it was probably like four or five months because we just had so much footage to work through and I knew that after we left the Bahamas we'd have much less so I wanted to use everything that we had you know that was all the good stuff mm-hmm. so yeah it's uh that was the pinnacle of the dream <laughs> <It was. laughs> at least right now yeah um but yeah no this time we really need it we, okay. we want to get caught up yeah <laughs> so, you so. guys both were quite experienced in making um movies and this style of work i take it yeah yeah i mean yeah we, we both went to school we both went to school for video production mm-hmm. so it's, it's not okay. like we you know had no background in this and, and picked up a camera and figured it all out we uh but that being said i mean we're not the most technically proficient uh filmmakers either we've never had the best equipment we've never had the money to invest in the best mm-hmm. equipment we bought uh 
fake microphones on accident. Oh my gosh. We just couldn't believe it. We thought we were getting Rode brand microphones and come to find out a year and a half later, oh, Kirk like was going through threads. Yeah. Counterfeit. Yeah. The whole oh. time Kirk was like, why is our audio so horrible? And he would spend hours trying to fix it. And that was another reason why we were so far behind. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's no. ridiculous. But that was yeah. on Amazon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it, it actually it sent me down a rabbit hole trying trying to figure out why. Like, audio has always been tough for me. Like, audio, you know, there's people that go to school specifically for audio, and oh, audio yeah. is like one one component. You know, we just like, thought we just suck at audio, but and then we're like, why is everyone else's audio sound so and good? People raving about these microphones. Yeah, and it turns <laughs> out we we got it. and there's a whole like thread on a whole bunch of video production forums of people that bought these counterfeit road yep. video mics and uh yeah we, we got two of them in a row so we had bad audio for a long long time i can't believe that was on amazon man you should sue yeah. i swear get a class action type of situation going on against jeff yeah. bezos let's just take him out with these microphones like i think this this could be the key yeah that's, that's the linchpin right? right okay so just talking about the boat that you have um just sold um yes. tartan 37 I mean, that was just a gorgeous boat um it's just so and, and you made it even prettier as well which you wouldn't have thought possible um because you put so much effort into it um but can you just talk about like the journey of this boat like how you bought it where you got it and then like the type of sailing that you uh that you did on it sure. do you want to take it no <laughs> i have to <laughs> think about one. it for a minute <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it, um, we didn't know what type of boat we wanted. We we didn't we didn't narrow it down to a, really a small subset of models very quickly. Um, we were all over the place in the beginning, and and then eventually we we kind of narrowed it down into we didn't want like a really super modern racy boat with a fin keel and a spade rudder. We wanted something that was a little bit, you know, more. Uh, stable and in, in rougher weather we knew we'd be sailing you know the gulf and, and the great lakes themselves are actually quite rough they're yeah very similar to, to the gulf waves where mm-hmm. you're in shallow water they're steep chop you know they're close close together short period um so we wanted a you know a little bit of a heavier boat um we wanted something that was fiberglass ideally something that wasn't cord um although the the decks of the tartan clearly are cord. We mm-hmm. had some some deck rot, but that's what I was trying to avoid as much as possible. Um, and like we didn't have any sort of specifics around you know centerboard or shallow draft yeah. or keel steps mast or any of these other you know kind it's, of more it's specific. Kind of interesting because we really didn't spend a lot of time looking at model hulls. We spent a ton of time looking at catamarans, right, okay. like during the first year that we were searching. And so when we realized we're like, okay, we're, we don't have enough money to get the catamaran that we really need. It's just not going to happen. Um, we, we went to monohulls and then we started like figuring out like, oh yeah, there's these thing called blue water cruisers, you know, and like, there's a kind of a subset of boats that we probably should be looking for. Um, and we just, we didn't even um, want a shoal draft. Right. We no, just, I mean it wasn't it wasn't in the criteria. Yeah, and we we just ended up with it, I think. And once we saw the boat, and we were like, oh, a draft of four and well, Forms two, of change, yeah, that actually will be really good for the rivers in the Bahamas. So a lot of things kind of just fell Gel. together for us with this boat that we were we found. And actually, in in the the only experience that I previously had with tartans was. Uh, the tartan 10 which is a a around a 30 foot model that is a pretty um like racy racing there's a a racing series here in the great Lakes. so i i did a weekend race on a tartan 10 and that was kind of my experience on tartans that's what i thought they were was that's what they catered to and it wasn't until we actually spotted this boat that i started to really research tartans and you know all of kind of the history behind them and how solidly built they were and how beautiful they were. I mean, that you know, as a, as a cruising boat, they're they're a pretty fantastic boat. Um, so, yeah, we. I mean, we found the boat um, actually like a week after we uh, we were under contract with a, a previous boat. It was uh, a, Morgan. A Morgan thirty eight. Yeah. And uh, that that kind of fell apart. And that night we were devastated when we found out that you know we weren't going to be able to make this boat work. 
I went online and, and the tartan that we ultimately purchased was like the very first boat that I saw. And I made a call the very next morning. I think we saw it like 24 hours later and maybe 36 hours after that, like we were under contract. They're just like, boom, boom, boom. Like yeah. somebody want, you know, he, whatever. I remember Kirk it's showing open. me the listing. He's like, there's this, this tartan 37. I was like, what's a tartan? Like he didn't even know. He's like, oh, I remember I raced on a turn, like a racing boat. He's like, no, it's a cruising boat. So yeah, we really hardly knew anything about it. And it looked good in the pictures. And that was one thing that we were really looking for was a well taken care of boat because we were trying to get into something that we could take off in right away. Yeah. We didn't want to hang around trying to fix up something. And we had actually the Morgan that we were under contract to buy was going to require a ton of work. The boat was in beautiful condition but it just wasn't finished like all the systems need to be put in a bunch of woodworking needed to be done and um yeah so we, we didn't really know what we were getting no ourselves. we didn't know what yeah. we were so that falling through worked out better for yeah. us yeah and then man when we saw the tartan in per- person it looked even better than the photos and we were just like we we're smitten we're, yeah i was gonna say we were pretty smitten mm-hmm. <laughs> that was like word. is this the boat yeah it's, it's just it's one of those uh it's it's timeless like you know in 50 years people will look at that boat and they'll have exactly the same emotion from the way you guys yeah. looked at it um <laughs> you know it's not like a 1960s beetle you know where it's like right. okay let's take a newer version now please i'm sure i just offended a lot of people by saying that yeah probably um, yeah probably <laughs> yeah i'm not into like you know fat little german cars um so yeah it's, it's just uh yeah it was just a stunning boat i think like you did super well by that other deal falling out because like i um the guy <laughs> who bought my boat i was having a conversation with him because i needed to change a couple of bits and he wanted to take it off me i was like no let me fix them because it's like your first cruising boat and you need to have this ready to go because yeah. the feeling of like getting a boat and it's like oh god now i need to fix it like i, I would hate that um <laughs> so yeah it's good that you got one that just worked <laughs> straight away yeah yeah yeah. And, and it, I mean, we still spent a ton of time working on it, right? Like we, that's the other thing is it yeah. wasn't cruising ready. Yeah. It was, it was weekend sailing ready. Yeah, so it needed a lot yeah. of stuff. Yeah. But I mean, it was in good condition. Yeah. The boat was well taken care of, but that's, you know, that's again, back to kind of a lot of these things that we learned about, which is how do you plan to use the boat, right? Mm. Like a boat can be in a good condition, but if it doesn't have the things that you still need on it, for how you plan to use it, you're gonna, you're still gonna be in for a lot of work. Which is actually how we then sort of designed our our sale plan, I suppose you should, our our schedule, our our goals. <laughs> so we were like, okay, we don't have, we have a terrible battery bank. We need to install, um, you know, a robust battery bank. We need solar panels. We need to upgrade this and that and the other thing. And so we tried to plan like, okay, this is what we need to get down the river. This is what we need to get, you know, from the river through the Gulf and then to Florida. And like, what are we going to need to go to the Bahamas? And we tried to do all of those things, taking on big projects, maybe one or two at a time each season so that, you know, we weren't completely overwhelmed, but we still had what we needed in each season. I think it's like, it, it, was, it was a very good boat and generally a very good boat size and age to like learn all those practical skills on as well. Because you yeah. did a lot, you did a bit of everything. You did like upholstery, you did uh, interior work, um, you know, you did rigging on it, electrical, like, and it's it's great to learn on a boat where if something does go terribly wrong, okay, it's not like a you know four hundred thousand dollar floating home. But it's like something that okay, we can make a change here or we can fix something there. Um, so yeah, it's it's great to have like that first type of boat for that, so you can learn kind of from your mistakes in a way as well yeah 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 we 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 didn't feel that way oh yeah <laughs> yeah <I did>. we, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we felt like we took ownership of this thing that this this beautiful object that had been around since before either of us mm-hmm. and that we were now its caretakers and and we <sighs> had to like look out for it right and yeah if, if we messed it up like the sea gods i don't know who they are but they they come looking for us you drilled a hole in the teak where you shouldn't have you know yeah. like yeah. we really tried to you know do as little as possible and try to preserve what was there like we didn't go you know with a hacksaw yeah, we, the thing. we didn't do you know like uma 
Uma completely redesigned it. They're both yeah. architectural students, right? But their boat was three thousand bucks, right? I think. Yeah. Yeah. But they they completely changed the interior layout. And yeah. Ripped you know things out all over the place. The boat we was asking for it. That. Our boat was not asking for it. We <laughs> yeah. added. We added jewelry <laughs> to an already good looking boat. Yeah, I th- and I think that's Useful. what made it so much better as well. It's like, you know, it was, yeah, I mean, it was great to start off with, and it's like you only added to that classical element, but made it really yeah. clean also, yeah. which is great. You know, I'm just like, the boats from that era, like 1960s, 70s, going in, going into 80s kind of, and then more expensive boats since then. Um, like in 20, 30, 40 years' time, I just don't think people are going to have that emotional attachment because they, they all look the same now. Um mm-hmm. You know, I, I can't. I did a podcast with somebody else. Oh, it was John Kretschner, the um, passage making mm-hmm. uh, instructor. It's like um, a really, really competent sailor. He's wrote books yeah. and stuff like that. And um, yeah, like in 30, 40 years, there isn't going to be like any Tartan 37s. They're probably not going to be floating anymore. Or if there are, it's going to be very, very few of them because it would have cost so yeah. much money to like refit and refit and refit. And um, yeah, it's just going to be like little plastic fiberglass X charter things because the. 40 foot boats now that are made for blue water cruising are super expensive. Right. Right. Hmm. Yeah. It's uh it's an interesting design period because it's back far enough where sailing was still kind of like a, a yachty hoity toity. Like uh, there was a lot of design considerations and it's, you know, like now it's, it's much more about like, you know, cost and budget and what is it like, how many bathrooms can we put in? Yeah, like, like, yeah, like, how can we make yeah. the most money out of a charter fleet, and how can we kind of cut costs in a production to, like, you know, bring bring expenses down because they've gotten so expensive. But I think, yeah, there's that era where they didn't really know how solid fiberglass really was, but there was still like really beautiful, clean lines. It was a craft and, still then, and now it's a production. Yeah, yeah. That's a really interesting choice of words. Actually, I think that reflects it quite well. <coughs> That it was like craft and not production. Yeah, yeah that makes makes a lot of sense. Um, right, just on in regards to like um, you, you know, you're buying the boat and you spend like a number of years cruising on it and upgrading it. How did you manage like the finances with that? Did you like save up a chunk and then that was like boat and refit? Um, did you earn money from like freelance work as you were going and that's how you refit it? Like, how did all that plan and work out? Uh, both. Yeah. yeah, it was it was a lot of stress actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. um, we we were you know we weren't um, and we've never been someone who can like you know just pop into a town on a shoestring with a few dollars in our pocket and you know like go busking or whatever and fi- you know figure our way out. <laughs> like we can't live that close to the the uh, yeah you know, the, the line. We're just the line we is, feel like but... we're too old for that. Like we we need to we need to be more responsible. Like we can't just we do now. like, Oh, we're going <laughs> to, we we're going to save up, you know, 50,000 bucks and buy a boat and we're going to bring whatever we have in our piggy bank. And that's that, you know, yeah. like we're going to just go, what, I'm going to sew. And what, like a lot of people, you know, it's, it's noble to do that, it's but amazing. we make just it work as well. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. And, and you can like, you know, yeah. I think, um, you know, there's a lot of motive, motivation or motivating factors when you're when you're living that close to the edge right like you're gonna figure out how to make it work because there's no other option yeah I think um like I didn't want to do that because I had already done it for 10 years like I've already waited tables for 10 years you know so I didn't want to end up in a position where you know we have to stop cruising because we have to start start making money again. So the whole goal and the reason why it took us so long to dive into cruising was because we were trying to set up our passive income streams and our remote working setup um, so that we could keep making money while we were cruising and we weren't going to sink. Financially. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we could just worry about, yeah, yeah, trying not to sink literally. Yeah, so we, um, yeah, we, we saved up a chunk of money, um, enough to have purchased the boat. We didn't purchase it in cash, but we could have. We took yeah. out a loan for, for other reasons, which we can get into or not. But It was, we will, it was purely financial, we're, actually. We're, yeah, we're, we're just, planning to make a couple more videos about that aspect of it because a lot of people have asked us. But um, we, uh, 
we had a bit of passive income. We have two rental properties. Uh, we had three at one point. We've sold one. Um, but so that, you know, makes us like the tiniest bit of money, not enough to live on by any means, even on a boat floating for free at anchor somewhere. We yeah. couldn't live on that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, in the future, like the, the hope is that that's kind of a, a retirement, you know, yeah. nest egg. Being creative people, we knew that we were never going to make enough money. Um, doing creative type work to like be able to actually have a solid retirement. So that was kind of always that plan. Um, and then, yeah, we, we did freelance work. So I, I had a, a contract kind of with a, an old um, employer of mine that I, I worked uh, for I don't know, the first three or three and a half years. Yeah. Um, Lauren still did a bit of freelance work here and there. And, you know, we, we made videos and, um, Still did you did some uh, video contract work? Uh, mm -hmm. Even with I did video editing and a few others. And uh, yeah, I I was trying to run my real estate photography business that I had started in San Diego um, before we moved and bought our boat remotely. So I had actually like hired a photographer and was just doing client management and editing, uh, doing posts on the on the photos. Nice. Um, so I did that for the first season that we were on the boat, and slowly the more seasons we got into cruising we started to shed that stuff and we made more videos and we grew our our support online so by the end it was all youtube that's really yeah. cool yeah yeah that's well, really good and 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 the passive rental the the real estate we still have that yeah. but otherwise all of our freelance work was gone yeah that's really good and it's like, I think as well, um, the way you approach it, because it's like, I think most people see adopting this type of lifestyle as like one of two options. You wait till you're retired and you've got loads of money and you get a, you know, 50, 60, 70, whatever, or you just go for it when you're young and stupid. Um, and it's like, I do think the best thing to do is the way you've done it. And it's kind of the way we're doing it as well. Although I think I might be a bit older. I've got a few more wrinkles than you guys. Um, but just get to the point where you can do it in relative comfort. Um, yeah. Like a level of comfort that you're used to, you know, if you've, if you live in like a three bedroom house or you've got a nice condo, just kind of hang out until you can get something that you're going to be comfortable in. Don't like really downgrade your lifestyle. Cause then you'll just find it harder. Yeah. 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 And it's already hard. No matter yeah. what, like, no matter, no, even if you're making, you know, this relatively, uh, parallel or, or horizontal move like just living on a boat is tough you know like you're not carrying your water to your house every day you're not carrying your garbage <laughs> in your basic human stuff. waste away every day yeah. you know like yeah just the very basic yeah life I, is tough on a boat i think if we uh if that was like the first thing we did after we graduated high school is like yeah we're gonna buy a boat and go sail around the caribbean or something totally could have seen done doing it like that yeah for yeah. sure going off with no money and just winging it winging it yeah. but we had already burned up our wing in it years <laughs> yeah so we, we did that traveling around australia we did yeah so yeah yeah we wanted I to have if, uh if you've got that out of your system as well well it depends like a lot of people they you know they possibly don't really travel until they're in the mid-20s i traveled yeah. like after high school so i'd already you know been around asia and you know slept in the most vile conditions <laughs> you know to the point where i was like okay i don't i don't want to do this for 10 years let's go and get <laughs> yeah. something out save something you know and go and stay in like a hotel or at least us you know private toilet um right so yeah it just depends what you're used to yeah that's true yeah, yeah. so with regards to like the um the journey of the boat on the tartan at what point did you decide okay we want to get a new boat was that like a couple of seasons in or after a first season? What were you thinking? It was, um, it was, well, we know a very specific it? moment. It yeah, was, what was it? Hur Hurricane. Uh, oh, Hur right. No, oh, Dorian. Dorian. Hurricane Dorian. Oh, right. Yeah. Dorian. Yeah. So our, our boat was um, in uh, St. Augustine. Mm. Um, so we were watching the hurricane completely decimate the Bahamas. Um, and like the, the previous years, um, so we had just the year prior sailed through, um, oh, uh, on the West coast, 
Pensacola. Um, Panama City Beach. Yeah, yeah. And so we had stayed a week there, and I don't even remember that. I believe that it was Matthew. Matthew. Went through there. Completely wiped out a place that we had just been. Mm-hmm. We were now watching Dorian completely wipe out a place that we had just been a few the months The beautiful before. Abacos just, mm-hmm. it crushed us. I couldn't believe it. And um, the, the path at the time, despite, um, I think. <sighs> yeah. The National Weather Service saying it was going to go. Um, they were they were basically predicting a landfall like right in northern Florida. Yeah. Like, okay, our boat is about two and a half feet above uh, sea level. Mm-hmm. When we were there, even on like some of the larger tides, like the water was there was water up, up around the jack stands. stands. Like the boat's about, not tied down with any hurricane anchors or anything. We're losing this boat. Like, yeah. It's gone. We were convinced for about twenty four hours that it would it was gone. And the hurricane didn't go there um we were completely spared it was not it was there was high day. winds there was like 50 mile an hour winds and there was some pretty high water yeah um, but but nothing happened. it was fine but in in that period um we kind of reverted back to the first boat that, that we had really gotten serious about was this um catamaran uh, it was it was called nice pair it was a boat that actually used to be in the great lakes it was a very stripped down like racing catamaran but it was it was trailerable um and uh so we kind of went back to this idea of the way that we saw ourselves starting to sail and use our boat over you know the next three or four or five or six years as we have little kids was this concept of trying to sail in the great lakes during the summer and to sail in the somewhere else Caribbean or some other cruising destination the east coast maine the Sea of Cortez, yeah. wherever we wanted Pacific to, Northwest. Uh, mm-hmm. during the winter months up here in, in the Great Lakes season and, and try to get the best of both worlds. And so we were asking ourselves, why are we spending all of this time uh, working on a boat in boat yards? Um, why are we, you know, why are we paying to store it? Paying to store it mm-hmm. for hurricane season. And um, then, and then being emotionally crushed every time a hurricane comes to your head. <laughs> <laughs> think we're going to lose it. Yeah. Oh. So we, we kind of went back to that, you know, that model of, of, of this voyaging kind of sailing that I'm talking about. And, you know, to be able to sail up here, which we didn't really get to explore. We sailed for three, three weeks. months. Well, we were here for three months. We're, we and we sailed for, yeah. Mm-hmm. Around Lake Michigan and just barely scratched the surface because there's so many cool cruising destinations up here. Um, and having a boat that moved at five knots and, couldn't go over the road and um, you know all of that. It 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 limited us to you know choosing. We could either continue to sail up up here for six months, or we could sail down in the Caribbean area for six months um, because we knew we wanted to have a child and that we weren't going to be crossing oceans uh, with yeah. a, with a toddler on board. And we wanted to have these little ones close to grandparents it was the biggest thing. Yeah. So. That's so um, we, yeah, I think you like just gave such it away. an important thing as well. Like, um, <clears throat> my we live in uh, Spain, and my family is like in the UK. My wife's family is in Dubai, and it's like it is such a struggle. Do you know when you don't have support around? Um, like we haven't had a day off in three years. We haven't had one yeah. night off, not even a day off. We haven't had a babysitter. We take him to nursery sometimes. But, you know, sometimes he's really upset when he gets back and then you have help for an entire afternoon, you know. <laughs> so it's like, oh. yeah, like being around, uh, you know, their grandparents, like, oh, it's, it makes your life so much easier. Yeah. Yeah, we, um, I think our, our daughter has formed an almost unhealthy relationship <laughs> with my mother. <laughs> right, okay. we, we, they have a very, very tight uh, Yeah tight relationship when when she shows up my Ren- renata just like goes into another dimension. berserk yeah <laughs> she just, she's like not our daughter anymore <laughs> <laughs> hey if it means more date nights or pizza or a few drinks down yeah. at the bar then just absorb it and enjoy it <laughs> yep 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 we've, yeah. uh, we've been taking advantage <laughs> yeah so do, i mean when when it came to like making the decision to sell that boat and then move on to the next you've had like a few thoughts and a few ideas um what about the old boat has molded a decision to purchase a specific type of boat for your next boat handful of things um one being 
uh, you'll see soon. Right. <laughs> so <Okay>. we really <laughs> two horses better than one. Yeah, we wanted yeah. to move to a multi home, so that was a, a huge reason. Um, yeah, I was just say another is just my physical size. Yes. So I'm six two, um, mm. and there there wasn't a place on the Tartan Thirty Seven that I could completely stretch my body out uh, oh. and not feel feel the edges of something. So mm. the cockpit um, was too short to completely lay down in. The V berth, I if I stretched my toes out, you know, like I had to lay flat footed. He had to lay like he was in a coffin, was, you know, with you know, feet up pushed. like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then standing, you know, standing up the same thing, the settees, like there was nowhere that I could just you know, go like this and just be like a big, uh, you know, making like a, a snow angel or anything, mm -hmm. you know, and just, just feel like I was not sort of caged. Yeah. But it doesn't actually mean that we're getting a boat that well, no, so, fixes so, that so. problem, but it, it's getting him out of the boat where it really was a problem because yeah. on a multi hull you typically spend more time above the waterline than you do below uh with a monohull they you know they call you what a gopher or something yeah. what is it multi-hullers call monohullers yeah uh pra prairie dogs prairie dogs gophers. yeah because they're always oh, really? hopping up through the hatch yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. i've not heard that usually before. down below <laughs> yeah. so uh, uh, right. but, but yeah i mean that, that was a boat that we were living full-time on yeah and, yeah and for the next couple of years we're not going to be living full-time on the boat so some of those requirements have changed you know specifically for our next boat um but but long term yeah we we wanted a boat that we we know that if and when we sail around the world or when we cross the pacific or whatever our next big you know sort of goal is going to be that it's going to be on a multi-hull and we want to spend some more time developing some of those sailing skills. Yeah. So like when you're sailing a, a monohull, you know, there's a lot of different tactics you take in different sea states and wind conditions that you wouldn't take in a, in a multi-hull and vice versa. Oh, yeah. um, and being able to, you know, spend a little bit of time practicing those things and getting comfortable with them and, and you know, how uh, a different type of boat handles in different types of weather uh, is, you know, a, a, another thing that we're interested in, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of passion out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I've never, I've never actually skippered a catamaran, um, but I've been on plenty of them when they've been sailing. Um, I've helped, but I've never actually skippered one. Um, yeah. But I, I, I watched a video. Um, I don't know, some point last year, because we were looking at catamarans for a little while. Because my wife gets incredibly seasick; she had to go for like hypnotherapy to get rid of it. Oh, wow. and, um, did it work? Bizarre, yeah, which was oh, weird. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it really worked. So, um, and I, I'm wait, like, like is very... it gone now? Gone. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, I'm very open minded to a multitude <laughs> of things. But when it came to hypnotherapy, I was like, that's fake. Uh, I was not buying it at all. <laughs> didn't say that to my wife. You know, I was just being a very optimistic, supportive well, husband. Is... But I was thinking, this is crap. Um, but no, it completely worked. She was scared of the water. She was scared of walking around the boat and she was vomiting everywhere. Oh. Uh, like literally as soon as we got a heel on, I was just waiting for a little head to pop up out of a hatch and just spew everywhere. And um, yeah, it just, it I think four or five sessions, a few hundred dollars. And uh, oh. yeah, she was, she was walking around the deck. She was jumping in the water. She, I think after a couple of days, she wasn't throwing up. I was so surprised. And, and uh, when did that happen? And how long has she been sure. seasick free? Uh, she's been seasick free for a year. Yeah, because we wow. went, we did, uh, we did a bit more sailing at the end of last year in Greece, and she was absolutely fine for that. Um, oh my so, gosh! Well, yeah, it works. Ask you for a recommendation. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, yeah. I am, I'm getting seasick. It's fifty percent mental for sure, and fifty percent, you know, physical. Mm. I, I, I absolutely believe it, and. Because yeah. we were actually worked through a couple of my episodes, like Kirk was like distracting me, and I was like, "I'm gonna get through this," and I was like screaming like at the top of my lungs just to try to, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what I was get trying to do, it. but yeah, get around it, and it, yeah. it did help. It it kept me from actually getting sick, um, yeah. but I still have that queasy feeling. So man, if there was any way I could actually get rid of it like that, well, anyway, so okay. the woman who. <laughs> 
the woman <laughs> who helped my wife, we just rec- well, we recommended her to a few people. We we just recommended her to another um, couple of cruisers. Actually, you might like they just started up a YouTube channel. They call like Deep Blue Dirts. They do uh, biking. It was actually like a sponsored stunt bike person. Um, don't know exactly. Anyways, they're good on a bike. And um, they do like half sailing, half like mountain biking, but it's, okay. it's really cool. Anyway, so um, she froze up a little bit, Jenny, and we just recommended her. And I think she's going to do them over Zoom um, because they can't get to the office. So, uh, yeah, if it works over Zoom, I'll let you know and I'll yeah, follow the details. Oh, let on. me know. Yeah. I yeah. would maybe even consider flying over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, do you know, like when when we were in Greece, um, there was one of one of the girls who was there called Maddie, and they have a sailing channel called Rigging Doctor. Uh, oh, like yeah. really really cool old school sailing, British brilliant. And um, she she was sick all the time, like she was vomiting all the time. I mean, she just loves being on boats, so she was just battling through. But she's like, no, no, it's cool. I really love it. And I was like, amazing. Like you really really love sailing. But I was like, yeah. oh my gosh, like dealing with that like just constantly wanting to throw up on a boat. I, I don't yeah. think I could do it. Yeah. Wow. I don't get seasick at all. So yeah, I, I don't, it's, I, I, I struggle trying to understand what Lauren's going through because I can't put myself there and I imagine mm. how tough it has to be. Um, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah I, I was seasick once and it was because I woke up and for breakfast I had like two coffees and about six cigarettes I don't know why I was obviously just Ooh. feeling stupid but that was my <laughs> breakfast and I did end up being sick and that's that's uh yeah the, <laughs> the only occasion that's not surprising um, I don't know if you'd have to be on a boat for that to yeah make you sick either. I've got a pretty high tolerance to this type of stuff so yeah maybe it was the boat that tipped me over the edge um, <laughs> No, I think that I've, I've only really been sick once. It was when I, I was um, going to the gym loads and somebody was, was like, I have egg whites. So I was like, okay, I'll have egg whites. And like, just don't do that, basically. Um, so yeah, I got really sick off it. And Hibber was like, yeah, I just feel like that, like all the time we're sailing at first. And now she's fine. So um, yeah, maybe it works. I'll let you know anyway. If, if, okay, if magic please works do. Over Zoom. <laughs> if the, uh, <laughs> maybe that's what it is um cool all right so just in regards to like the um the youtube stuff what's uh what's coming up because you're doing like your first season on the boat still with the baby um how is that timeline wise in terms of you then selling the boat and then looking for the next one yeah um so we actually even we haven't announced that we sold our boat really not not in YouTube. I mean, we did, we did. We've only, I think, told people personally in emails that we actually yeah, sold it. I mean, it was on, it was on Facebook. Like, that we were going to sell it. Yeah. And so I think people, you know, they might not know that we, yeah, yeah that we actually sold it or not. Um, yeah, the boat is sold. The boat is sold. It is. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we sold it last fall. So no, no, nobody needs to contact us. <laughs> like, even yesterday, I got an email like, hey, is the boat still for sale? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We we sold it. Oh, I, I, you know, I wanted to tell you one more thing. Um, you were asking about why or what informed us on our old boat as to what our new boat would be. Mm-hmm. Um, the last big thing was maintenance. We didn't yeah. want to have to do so much maintenance. Like the tartan right. was beautiful, but teak too much teak, and it didn't even oh, have yeah. that much teak. But you, yeah, but it's just incredible how much work it requires. Yeah. Um, all of the stainless that was on it. Um, I can't remember the other yeah, I think stuff. We, we, we started a list somewhere. We, we might have to, we might have to reference that, but like there, there were a few like specifics that we did make a list and we were looking for an expo, but yeah, maintenance was going to be one, like having, um, having everything exposed. So our boat, yes. like mm. I, I liken it to somebody wearing a tuxedo, right? Like when you wear a tux, like everything, you got this nice jacket that covers up your shirt and your tie covers up your buttons on your shirt and the cuff, and you're know, like, everything is like, you know, covering it up to make everything look perfect. And uh, I really like the style of boat, you know, like, um, why is it slipping my mind now? Chris White, uh, oh. Atlantic Cats. Or okay. like other other boats that are like 
very, very functionally designed where all of your fasteners are exposed and easily accessible. Mm -hmm. Um, It's, you know, a nice, clean, white interior. Like we loved our wood. It was like, it was beautiful. It was like a little cocoon, dark yeah. cocoon that we could go into in the middle of the day to get out of. Like, it's so pipe. impractical. Just very yeah. impractical. Yeah. So that that was. I just wanted to mention that. Like that was another huge yeah. factor. Um, yeah, mi- minimizing stainless on the exterior, minimizing teak, teak on the exterior, having everything exposed and easily accessible, and otherwise simple mm-hmm. systems too, which is a whole other conversation. But yeah, so that was a it's big kind thing. of like the boat manufacturers know what they're doing in a way. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this is what they're all yeah. doing now <laughs> yeah yeah so just meeting the demands it's just that yeah. trade-off yeah. isn't it it's like it's you know when you have a boat like that it's just like having an incredibly well you know maintained perfectly kept antique in your living room that you just want to stare at all the time yeah. um but yeah pain to maintain teak is just like yeah with our next boat i just want to avoid that as much as possible like the cost of teak now is insane yeah like to get like the boat that we're looking at i was on a group and i was asking a few people like you know it's gonna it's gonna need to be replaced eventually and i was like what's the cost and people are like forty fifty thousand dollars i'm like mate that's like a tesla there's no way i'm spending that on pieces no chance (laughs) yeah it's crazy for sure yeah, yeah. Oh there's, a, there's a cheaper alternative that you can get in Europe. I don't know if you can get it in the States, but it's called Iroco. I think it's from like Africa. So it's a bit more sustainable as well because they don't have to bring it like halfway around the planet like they do with tea. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah especially still, if, yeah, most boats are being built in South Africa, right? So very close there. Yeah, I think a lot of manufacturers now are starting to move to different types of woods for that reason. Or if they're not, they should yeah. do. I mean, it's quite silly like, you know, chopping down trees on the other side of the planet and then bringing those little yeah. pieces of wood all the way around especially if you've got them like <laughs> within your i mean boats that are made in europe and america they've got no excuse there's like so much water out there it's crazy yeah <laughs> so listen thanks very much for um talking a bit about your story and like what's coming next um really cool really appreciate it and i think the listeners will really like it as well and um all the best got some good plans yeah. ahead yeah thank you so much it was, it was really a pleasure talking with you as well yeah.